Hi, Angela Wolf here, owner of Angela Wolf Patterns and Online Academy. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about sewing a jacket facing. Especially if you have a jacket that doesn't have a lapel. You want that facing to go towards the inside of the jacket and not pop out. So let me show you a few tricks for this. So here I have, this is the front, the front of a jacket and the facing piece. And you always wanna have inner facing on the back side here. And if it was an unlined jacket, I would only have interfacing along this edge here because once the facing is sewn on, this would hide all of that extra, okay? Now, if it was a line jacket, maybe you have your whole front piece interfaced, it doesn't matter. The process will be the same. So you need your facing piece, your front of your jacket, and some twill tape. Let's go to the sewing machine. All right, now of course you would do this all the way around your jacket and I just have a portion, but I thought it would be easier for you to see this way. So you would do the same thing to both sides, obviously. Okay, I'm gonna use a contrasting thread so you can see this. I have the stitch length set at about a 2.5. It really depends on your fabric though. You might need a 3.0 if you're using a tweed. And I'm just gonna stitch around the front neckline. And then when I get to the front edge, I'm just gonna stitch all the way to the end and just click off instead of turning. It's just a little trick that I've learned through the years to make sure that both sides match up. So if you were stitching down the other side as well. Now I'm going to start at the top and stitch down. And one little thing is I usually start having twill tape not all the way up to the front top edge, it's just a little bit too much bulk. I'll start down about right here. And now I'm adding twill tape to the bottom. You just have to be careful that you're not pulling the twill tape too tight. You just want these to stitch exactly equal. The, the twill tape is the equal amount as the fabric underneath. I'm also going to add twill tape to the neckline, but I always sew that first, just to make sure that both sides look the same. Then you can go back and add the twill tape. Sometimes it's a little hard when you're trying to sew all three layers. All the way to the end. Okay, so make sure that that lays nice and flat. If it's puckering at all, it means that the twill tape was a little bit too tight. The last thing I'm gonna do here is just stitch a couple stitches right across that top corner. All of this can happen on one step. See that little right here? When we go to make a point there for the corner, you'll notice this makes a big difference. So let's go back to the table for a second. So here you have the top corner edge. I left this little point here, which you'll see the reason for that. Now, depending on the, corner, the curve, if I have a collar on here, if it was just a curve like this, I would go back and stitch twill tape, starting about right here, all the way around the curve. It will keep your neckline supported. For now, I'm just gonna leave it. Now you're gonna go back and take your scissors and you're gonna put your scissors on a curve. This is very similar to what I showed earlier this season. And you're just going to trim. And with your scissors on a curve like this, you're actually trimming the facing side a little bit shorter for the seam allowance than the jacket. all the way up to the end. And now when I get to this point here, I'm just gonna trim that off. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do before, well, just to give you a little idea, when this flips over, this will turn into a really nice point. It's just that little trick of those two little stitches going across the end. But the next thing we need to do before I hem it is go ahead and understitch. So first I'm gonna press this, and you're gonna press with the seam allowance going towards the facing. 
Give it a little steam. Right, and a little more. And this understitching that we're gonna add is kind of the trick to getting this to go to the back side. And of course, you do the same thing to the whole neckline, but I'm just gonna focus on the center front here just so you can see what's going on. And give it one more pressing. Depending on your fabric, you'd be using a press cloth here. I don't use one just so you can see a little bit better. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine. Now we're gonna stitch right along the edge of that facing. So I have my needle down maybe about, gosh, an eighth of an inch from that seam. And you're gonna use a smaller stitch length. If you, if you were using a 3.0, now you're using a 2.5, which is what I've been using, but just in case. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm gently pushing back the seam, I'm pushing that open, and I'm making sure the seam allowance is under on this side. So if I open this up, you can see right here. And you're gonna stitch all the way down. Now I don't finish all the way to the end because we're gonna hem this and if you have top stitching there, it kind of gets in the way. So I'm just gonna go down maybe about two inches from the end. Do a stay stitch to make sure that stitch doesn't come out and this is what you have here. Now what about the hem? Let's go back up here real quick. So there's the facing. When I turn this, right side out. You can see the because of that top stitching, it automatically pushes that facing to the wrong side of the garment. This will really help so your facing doesn't pop out. Pop out to the right side of your jacket, which is what you do not want. And now you can see right here how nice that point is for the curve. You just don't want, those two little stitches on here really make a difference. Instead of having a, like it pointing way out or just a weird looking angle. All right, give it a little steam. Okay, look at how nice that looks. Your facing is pushed to the wrong side, which you can definitely see here. Now, what about the hem? So I, the next thing I would do is press up my hem all the way around the entire jacket. So let's just say that it's right here. We do not need all of this hem allowance in the hem, right? And see how I stopped my stitching here, which will allow me to fold this back. So the next thing you're gonna do, that fold will give you a guide you're gonna fold this back and make sure that you have your seam allowance facing this way. All right, I'm just gonna put a pin here. And this time when you stitch, you're not gonna stitch directly on this fold line. You're gonna go just below it, just a little bit. All right, because you have to think, the bulk of your fabric, when you flip your seam right side out, you don't want all of this bulk inside of here and also you need to give yourself a little bit of extra room so when you do turn it it's even with your pressed hem and depending on how thick your fabric is you might have to go a little bit further down it really depends all right so you can see there's the press line there's my stitch line let's go back up here Okay, so if this was the hem of your jacket, we don't need all of this bulk. Look what would happen if I turn this right side out. It looks okay, but it's really thick inside of here. So go back in here, and this would be the same even if your jacket was lined. I'm gonna trim just the hem allowance to this point right here. And then I cut in cut that off. So for the jacket part, I leave this the same amount all the way over, not to the end though. See all this extra stuff I'm cutting off? And for the facing, you trim that part off. And again, remember we stitched below that fold. You can see it really good on this side. There was the pressed. There's maybe just an eighth of an inch different. Now, when I flip this to the right side, 
I haven't even pressed this yet, but you can see how here's my folded edge and this is equal to that now. Just look at the right side. This is before I even press anything. And the facing is also tucked towards the inside of the garment. That's what you want. Give this a little pressing here. There you go, nice and flat. This would be the same thing as if you were using lining. Now, the only difference is if you were using lining, this would be tucked under just a little bit like this. But because I didn't, now I could go ahead and hand tack this or this would cover it up if it was an unlined jacket. And then one more look at this part here. If I flip this inside. Again, if you have too much bulk on any of the curved edges, just trim back a little bit more. The idea is when you turn this, because you have that, those stitches right here, that will fill in that gap. So if you've ever made a jacket and had this where it was super pointy, that, this will solve that. And now it's a nice, a nice point, but it has a little curve to it, a little rounded edge. All right, that is our jacket. So you would do this all the way around both sides of the facing, and you can see here the facing is pushing towards the wrong side. It's exactly what you want. So even with that, you could then go and add top stitching. So this is under stitching. Top stitching would be then stitching about a quarter of an inch away all the way down, or whatever you wanna do. So again, take a look at this jacket here. I did the under stitching here that twill tape prevents this from stretching out. You would also want twill tape to go around the neckline. That will prevent this from stretching out. A great way to finish a jacket, make it look professional. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit more about jackets. See you then.